the rest of the story. May 1860, Paiute Indian runners bearing urgent news arrived breathless at their destination. For there at Pyramid Lake in western Nevada was convened a great tribal council, among whose leaders one topic alone was discussed, making war on the white man. The Paiute runners were brought before their chief, Namaga, and promptly reported to him the desperate events only days past. It seems two Paiute women had been kidnapped by four white men and then raped and then locked in the cellar of their trading post on the Carson River. The husband of one of the women, himself a member of the Bannock tribe, learned what had happened, told his chief. The following day, a group of Bannock braves rode to the trading post and killed the kidnappers and rescued the women. Chief Numaga, listening, nodded slowly and then ordered, we must prepare for war. Well, meanwhile, back in Virginia City, militia from four towns had assembled to pursue the Indians who, as far as they were concerned, had murdered the white traders in cold blood. Major William Ormsby was chosen as general commander of their combined forces. After two days marked through the Truckee River Valley, the men sighted about a hundred Paiute warriors on a plateau in the distance. Those numbers were comparable to their own, so the white eyes confidently advanced on the Indians. But by the time an eerie, indefinable dread has rippled through the pursuers, it was too late. Paiutes erupted with war cries and appeared as though from nowhere, from behind sagebrush and from behind hills all around them. Militia who were not caught and killed immediately were chased on horseback for nearly 20 miles before the Indians engulfed them and hacked them to pieces and scalped them and beheaded them. The least fortunate few were taken prisoner and later tortured to death. Of the 105 white militiamen, 76 were slaughtered, 29 badly battered, returned home to tell the tale. Of the Paiute warriors, only three were even wounded. And so concluded one of the most decisive victories in the history of the Paiute tribe, a massacre. A massacre that ought never to have occurred in the first place. For the four white villains who had started it all, they were outsiders. They were strangers to the territory who had been asked simply to look after Jim Williams' trading post while he was briefly away. And Numaga, the Paiute chief who mobilized the warriors of his tribe, he all through his years of leadership had vigorously promoted the friendly coexistence of Native American and New American. In fact, virtually at the moment his runners arrived at the great council with news of the kidnapped women and the Bannock retaliation, he knew Maga, the determined pacifist, had argued into submission those tribal leaders who were so eager for war. And so he, knew Maga, had sealed a deal, had made a pact for peace, but communication by smoke signals was too slow. And now you know the rest of the story.